all these foods that we buy in the store come with these nutrition labels and they say how many grams of carbohydrate and they even will break down the sugars, right? Like how many sugars, how many grams of added sugar. Sugar and carbohydrates are not the same and sugar and glucose are not the same. And one of the biggest myths in nutrition in general is that carbohydrate equals sugar. And funny enough, we just this morning, we were at a this little cafe in town and they make these amazing like acai fruit bowls. So we go there with our friends and they have other other things on the menu too, but they happen to have food that like we feel really good about eating. They have smoothies and anyway, um and Cyrus ordered this huge smoothie bowl with lots of fruit on top and our friend who's no you know, they've known us for a while, he basically said you know, yeah, fruit equals sugar, fruit sugar. Like, how do you eat that? Isn't that, don't you have diabetes? And like, isn't fruit sugar? And I mean, it was one of those things where, is this a teachable moment? Does he really want to listen? Does he really want to know? Or, you know, are we going to go down this route right now? Like, are we really doing this right now? Um, And, but the reality is that unfortunately, especially in diabetes education and health, fruit equals sugar. And that is just false. Because we know that sugar that comes from refined foods, from your, you know, anything that's like a baked good or sugar cookies or, um, you know, adding refined sugar to a meal or to a, something that you're making is a very different molecule and has a very different influence on your body and on your glucose uh, levels than a fruit that is combined with fiber and water and minerals and vitamins and phytonutrients and all of these things that help to slow down the glucose uptake, right? And I think that might be an even bigger thing for us to discuss because that conversation this morning just really made me aware of just how little people really understand about nutrition and about, you know, how nutrient dense fruit this this bowl of food that Cyrus had for his meal and that we ha- you know I had one too how I looked at that as a bowl of energy and nutrients and vitamins and things that were going to help my cells like I just saw it so differently and yet in our general population people automatically look at something like that and think that's just a bowl of sugar. I may as well be eating a bowl of refined sugar and there there's couldn't be anything further from the truth well, when do we learn the term or when, when, why, how, and where are we going to get the term nutrient density from? That's also a part of it, right? The simplicity of, of wait a second, potatoes are, you know, when it comes to nutrient density, I'm going to feel full on a cup of potatoes, but hold on, they're like 35 grams of carbohydrates. That's, that's it. How does that work? But if carbohydrates raise my blood sugar, what do you mean by nutrient density? You know, the the um, less calories here, it, it's not a concept that is as understandable and too much, talk about content, too much gets thrown at one time that some of the simplest ideas get lost on us. Meaning, how could you really look at fruit and think that it's not a good idea? But again, we're tracking blood sugar, right? This is the thing that we're focused on. We're really looking at it. So of course you can be, you get to be concerned about anything you eat that's a carbohydrate, but the idea is learning how to work with it because at the same time, insulin resistance needs to be reduced, but there's a strategy to it. It's not like, all right, head out into the wild and eat all the carbohydrates you can without even thinking about, you know, in fact, I saw a product last week. I have to tell you about, I don't know if you've seen this. This is, everybody's going to gasp. They are, it's a can, a 15 ounce can of Dr. Pepper beans. They, they are, I think they're kidney beans with 17 grams per cup. So there's two cups, about two cups in there per serving. So a half cup, um, 17 grams of added sugar in the form of Dr. Pepper, the soda. They're Dr. Pepper wow. beans. They're Dr. Pepper flavored like beans. Soaked in it's soaked in Dr. Pepper. And I just, wow. God, now, huh. what now? You know, we're, come on, don't mess with the beans. I mean, that was just I my know. response to this. <laughs> just would you, they ha- they're just, they have everything they need. Leave them don't. beans alone. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just, nobody needs this. Stop. And seriously, I know wow. and it just, it happens to be at this cat sanctuary. I volunteer at, and I love it so much. So I'm not going to mess with them. <laughs> 
but they have this thing. Right. I know they have this thing. They're just one of the one of the founders just loves Dr. Pepper, and because. Everybody loves the sanctuary and they love her. So they'll send her Dr. Pepper and somebody sent Dr. Pepper beans. I went, wow. No. Oh no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh my gosh. That's so funny. Yeah. 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 You're like, really just leave the beans alone. Like, right. Leave don't. the beans alone. But like, you imagine like, it, this is how the fear with carbohydrates can start is that we, the way that we grow up, we may be growing up with beans in a casserole having a whole bunch of sugar added to it. So what we think of as beans or what we think of as a, as a whole grain, oh my gosh, like, you know, here what we've got is like a creamy wild rice soup. It's super high in fat. You know, it's like really thick, like cream sauce. And the wild rice itself get, gets lost in that really savory feeling. But as we know, um, Mastering Diabetes has some really awesome recipes with wild rice in them that look awesome with mushrooms and they're super savory. So it flips the script. So if we're willing to identify the fact that we've gone through a world of that's just major carb phobic because we've been given some wrong perceptions about carbohydrates, what they are and how useful they are. Maybe some of that has to do with how we grew up eating, but being open to flipping things around a little, trying one recipe at a time, try not to get overwhelmed, just enter the world of plants. And if you feel better, we're onto something. That's how we how I simplify is if you feel better, we're on to something. It's a also a little bit like well, the other side of the coin here is the real serious attachment to dairy. When you're high fat, serious attachment to dairy is if you don't think it helps you, if you think that your tummy hurts by consuming dairy, could you just maybe try three or four weeks without it and let's just see if you feel better. Little sacrifice to feel like a million bucks. Yeah. Just think of it that way, you know, think of it differently One thing at a time. Yeah. see where we go. Yeah. You know, I like that idea of like the kind of categories of food that you're experimenting with, right? Is what you're suggesting is like, let's just try this without, you know, and especially now with dairy, there's so many non-dairy alternatives for pretty much everything. I mean, not that I'm necessarily going to advocate for non-dairy alternatives for cheese or things like that. 